In this video I'm going to take a look at the Rock Block. This is a product that was launched on Kickstarter in December 2016 and it got successfully funded. The finished products were initially due to get to customers in September 17 and it only fell slightly behind schedule with the first shipments going out in December 17. But this was just after the company founder appeared on the US TV show Shark Tank where he sold the entire company for $500,000. Now, the Rock Block is a modern take on the Soundwagon. That's a product that's been on the market, I think, since the late 1960s. It's a vehicle that drives around in circles on a record whilst playing it. Vintage Soundwagons are now a collectible novelty, and they continue to be marketed under the name of the Record Runner. Although they are perhaps better known as the Vinyl Killer because of their propensity towards damaging records. The new Rock Block adds Bluetooth output into the mix, so how well does it play records? Well, just hang on a second and I'll show you. Now, I've got to say, I've got very low expectations of this device. It's not something I would have bought for myself, other than for the fact that so many people asked me to make a video about it. Now, you can see on the side there, it plays 33 and a third and 45 RPM records, and it works with any Bluetooth speaker. The packaging is quite minimalist. We've just got an instruction leaflet, a short USB lead, and the rock block itself, which is made out of wood, and it's held in place with these two bits of foam. The instructions are brief, although I think they've got enough in there to get you up and running. And there are some jokey bits at the bottom, I suppose. If you just look down there, you can see it says, Using Rock Block to play Milli Vanilli instantly voids warranty. Yep, okay. Looking on the bottom, we've got the on off switch, which also selects the two different speeds. The stylus on the right there, which is a diamond stylus, and that swivels out of position and locks in place at the top with a click when it's not in use. We've got the three white rubber wheels which drive along the surface of your record. On the bottom left there, there's a volume control for the built in speaker, and at the top, that's the Bluetooth button. On the bottom right, we've got the micro USB charging point and an LED below that. The case of this is made out of quite lightweight wood with lots of holes in it to let the sound out presumably from those speakers as well as maybe to cut down on the weight and we've also got this arm on the top which starts and stops the device moving around your record. I initially started by putting down a record mat on the surface to avoid the record getting any scratches and the record I'm using is this 10 inch by Anders Enger Jensen called Retro Grooves. He's a friend of the channel and this shouldn't hit any YouTube auto content matches. So let's have a look. And unfortunately it doesn't like playing with that mat in place. So I've moved that out of the way. So we'll give it another go and see how we get on it. Oh God, that's, that's exactly what's not supposed to happen. It turns out that getting it lined up is a bit trickier than I expected. Anyway, let's have another go. Well, that's terrible, isn't it? And just look at the record where the record's been played. You can see the mark going round it in a loop where it's worn down the groove. And of course, there's two big scratches as well where it drove across it earlier on. So, yeah, thanks for that, Rock Block. You've, uh, you've ruined that record. But anyway, I'm not going to use any others with it. We'll just keep trying it with this one. Right, now you don't need me to chime in here to tell you how awful this sounds, but I was interested to find out how much of that was down to the speaker moving around and whether or not it would sound better if I played it through some separate Bluetooth speakers. So let's give it a go. So to connect up, get your speakers into discovery mode or whatever it's called, hold down the button on the bottom of the rock block until the light goes on solid to show that the two things are connected together. And now let's have a listen to it over Bluetooth speakers. No, it's still indescribably awful. Now, if you just listen to these two quieter sections that are coming up, first off, you'll hear two clicks every time it drives over those scratches it carved into my nice new disc. And then have a listen out for the motor noise in between tracks. Now, 
being a charitable sort of chap, I thought, well, it can't be this bad, surely. I wasn't expecting it to be good, but, I mean, this is taking things to a whole new level. I thought, well, maybe it's not fully charged up. So I got out the little USB lead, but found out that was too short to reach anything. So used one of my own leads, plugged that in, and left it for a couple of hours until that red light went out, which indicated that the device was fully charged. So once it was fully charged, I thought, right, here we go, we'll give it one more go, put it on a record, and it was just as bad as before. Now, I was interested in finding out how much downward force is being applied on the record, the tracking force. It's obviously quite considerable, but I've got a device here for measuring it, which goes up to 5 grams. This is what I use with my normal turntable, which runs at 1.8 grams of tracking force. So I've leveled that out with a couple of LP covers here, so it's nice and flat, putting the stylus on the measuring section at the end there, and it maxes it out. It goes beyond 5 grams. Probably quite a bit beyond, but I can't tell you how much, I'm afraid, other than it's at least 5 grams. So to sum up, well, just remember I'm only one individual giving you my own personal opinion and it's truly one of the worst products I've ever had the misfortune to use. It's an abomination. It's got one job, to play records, but would you want to listen to records played through it? No. Is it going to damage the records while it plays them? Well, from my experience, the answer is yes. And it's not even cheap. It cost me about £100 to get one imported to the UK. You can get a decent record player for that. For example, the Audio Technica ATLP60. No, the only way this this could be worse would be if I paid $500,000 for it. Anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.